No, he usually, because before working with him, he just always seemed like a, he, he always knew his stuff. He was always a smart, smart soldier. He always knew his job. He knew everything about it. He was always very chilled, laid back, kind of, you know, when he was always kind of the, kind of the joker, I guess. He'd be the guy that always joked around and stuff. So I would have probably expected the last to see it come out of somebody like him. He did not seem like the, the wild crazy that would just go out there and do something like that. But uh, I guess, I guess uh, it's in the heat of battle and when one of your friends' life's on the line and stuff that you'll probably do pretty much anything. And if one of my, you know, especially as Clary, Sergeant Ecker, if that had been them, I mean, I don't blame him at all. I mean, I, I probably could I probably would have done the same thing just because that's, that's a friend, you know? It's not just a comrade and soldier. That's one of your friends. One of your friends you've known for years. And for some of these guys here, I'd do it for them too. I would, I don't blame him at all why he did that. I wouldn't say we were, I wouldn't say we were heroes. I would say definitely he was. I would definitely say he was a hero that night because just alone, I mean, him stopping and killing one of them as well, just running after them by themselves and stuff to save his friend's life, that's, that's a hero enough. The rest of us were just doing our job. That guy went out of his, out of his way, out of his job and out of everything, way out of the line of duty to did what he did. So I would say if anybody's here that night, it would definitely would have been him. I'm um, like, so the rest of us, we were just doing our jobs. What's it like now? Um, you, know, you probably would have never thought when you joined the Army that you know, reading the, uh, you know, the Medal of Honor write-ups from World War II and Vietnam and all that, that you were going to live and, and know someone if that was even possible that would have happened when you first joined the Army. I did not, um, the last, uh, I did not know that I'd actually be working with somebody that I could possibly have gotten it. I mean, myself, I never thought about getting any, any awards myself or anybody around me to be getting anything, especially something like that. It was, uh, I did not, I, I had read and heard prior to the Army that the only living recipient was Vietnam. All the rest of them were uh, posthumously awarded. So, before though, no, I never would have. And even if they told us that they were going to still put him in for it, it was still one of those things that I know people have put in before and they were always kicked back and I never thought it would have gone through, never believed it. I was like, he's probably going to get downgraded to maybe, a, you know, maybe the service cross or, you know, maybe something, you know, under that, under the line of that. But when they told me that it actually was going to get approved by the president, uh, I was actually pretty amazed that I was actually in a firefight with somebody that was awarded the Medal of Honor. That's it's pretty crazy. I mean, you get to, I mean, you get to tell your family, you know, your kids, your grandkids, and stuff, someday that you actually you knew somebody that that was awarded one. You know, you knew a legend. Like that's pretty much put it what what it is now. So. Um. I think that it was. I think it was good that that shed some light onto our, onto our element and to our uh, company and our battalion uh, per se. Because you're right. Before when we were out there, especially battle company, there when we were out there for a while during during some of the worst of it, there weren't reporters and nobody was tracking where we were at. People in the states had no clue where we were at. Nobody knew we were out there by ourselves. We we're like ghosts. Nobody knew where we were at and. You know, a lot of at that time, a lot of the folks were still in Iraq, so a lot of people didn't know what anything was going on in Afghanistan. Um, I think that at, that now, people are definitely going to go back and look about, hey, you know, this happened. You know, maybe they're going to come back and try to see that, you know, that there was more than just a war going on in Iraq at that time, and then, uh, and I think it shed more light onto uh, our operations and my company and my unit that were where we're operating in and the whole. Even other companies in my unit, just the uh, the operations that were going down during that time frame, it was uh, a lot of people had no clue what was going on. I think now they're gonna have to go back and you know maybe they'll have a second look at it and realize that you know there's a lot of stuff there that was missed that the uh, the public and the people back home didn't didn't see or have a you know have a clue on. They didn't know besides what we told them. They didn't know anything that was going on. They did not last deployment. My my folks personally didn't know anything because I didn't tell them anything just because it was just not one of those things I really were like talking about all at that time so but I think going back now and people getting a second look back especially the American people getting a second look back on what was going on during that time I think that could uh, 
I think that might put more people's mind, some people's minds at ease as far as families and stuff like that go. And uh, like so it might open their eyes more to what's what's really going on out, out there and out here, you know. So I think it definitely help everybody out in the end.